Lab guys. Today we're going to be going over basic server assembly, or if you want to call it, Servers 101. I'm going to be talking about whenever you first order a server, say it's from ServerMonkey, eBay, or another retailer. Um, some of you, you know, you guys go over to uh, government auctions and other places, liquidation sales, and you guys pick up things. I'm going to basically talk about what are some of the things you should expect whenever you get those servers. A lot of times, when you get those servers, they'll be stripped most of the time, not all the time. Um, I have just ordered Plain Jane ones from Server Monkey, and they come with nothing but the heat sinks. There's no CPUs, no uh, RAM, and the heat sinks also have no thermal paste on them. So if you see, I've got this one right here that I'm holding. There's no thermal paste here. Completely empty. We'll have to apply that later. But what I'm going to be going over is actually how to install the CPUs, how to install the heat sinks, how to install the RAM, and we will be going over the RAM actually in depth, and I'll be talking more about that here in just a bit. It is a big deal about how RAM is configured. On top of that, we'll be talking about drive cages. These drive cages are what actually store the drives. I've got them here. There's four screws total, one on each side. Actually, sorry, two on each side, one on each corner. We'll be going over how these go in, how we're going to slide these in, how they work. We have our rating controller. We'll be putting this in. We'll be getting it set up along with our SAS cable here. So we'll be able to go over everything. If you notice, the heat sinks, they actually come with no thermal paste on them. Go ahead, right when you get them, grab some rubbing alcohol, whether it's 70 proof, 90 proof. Put a little bit of it on a cotton swab, rub this down, let it dry off. Just make sure it's a clean area. Same thing now, we're going to go over to the... CPUs, these are actually Xeon E5620s. Do the same thing to them, take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just make sure when you get them that there's no thermal paste, we're gonna wipe them down, make sure they're clean. After that, we've got our RAM. We'll be putting in four four gig sticks currently into this R410. All right, so before we begin, we need to look at the instruction manual. I know, it sounds lame, but it's one of the first things I always do when first getting a new server. We, what we need to do is we actually want to pull the lid off. I've already removed the one from the Dell R410, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. When you go ahead and pull it off, you'll notice the inside cover actually has information. Let me show you what it looks like on top of the server. The server will come with the lid on it, such as that. We can go ahead and remove this, and as I was saying before, on the inside of the cover, you'll notice the service information sheet. On top of the service information sheet, you'll have information such as how to install things, hot swap the drives, and also memory configuration. The memory configuration is what we're most first actually worried about. We want to make sure that these four four gig sticks of DDR3 ECC RAM that we have are actually installed correctly. As I was mentioning before, I want to come in here and take a closer look actually at these basic instructions as I was saying earlier. These instructions just include basic service information and actually how to work or maybe install or swap things. As here you can show how to hot swap out your power supplies or your hard drives, along with installing your bezel, installing your hard drive, installing your fans, DVD drives, or RAID setup. You also can see over here the memory setup. This is what I'm going to focus at right now, as it will be one of the first things we install after installing the CPUs. As you notice, CPU 1 right here uses these following A1 through A4 RAM slots. A4 is a black slot, and right next to it, to the right, is A1. A1 will be the first slot we want to fill. After that, we'll want to fill A2, followed by A3, and the final one being A4. The same thing holds true for processor number two. If we come over here, we have B1 through B4. Starting with B4 is the black slot, following to the left of it, B1, to the left of that one, B2, and last but not least, B3. For this exercise, I'll be filling A1, A2, B1, and B2. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid and we'll get a closer look inside the server. So as we take a closer look inside the server, you'll notice the diagram was spot on as it was saying earlier. We have our black rail followed by the white rail. So we have A4 followed by A1 with A2 next to it and A3. And over here we have the same thing. We have B4 followed by B1, B2, and B3. And right here we have the CPU socket number one, CPU socket number two. To begin, we'll first be installing CPU number one followed by CPU number two. We'll then go ahead and install heat sinks on each of these, followed by the RAM. The RAM that we'll be installing is, as I said earlier, we'll be installing into A1 and A2 and B1 and B2, giving us a total of 16 gigs of RAM. Right here, we have processor socket number one. 
Let's go ahead and open it up. Once we have it open, we'll need to retrieve the Xeon that we'll be installing. To install the Xeon, we'll be wanting to line up this arrow right here, as you see, to the arrow right here on the board. So the corner of the chip needs to go to the corner up here. Drop the processor in and it should sit right in. Once it's sat in, go ahead and close the compartment and push back down the pin. It may be a little tight, but that's perfectly fine. Now that processor one's installed, we're gonna move on to processor two. So let's go ahead and get it opened up. Once it's open, grab the Xeon and make sure you line up the Xeon, the same arrow as I was talking before on processor one, down here to the same arrow on processor two. It should just drop right in. Once it does, close and secure it. Like I said before, it may be a little tight once you secure it. Once it's secured, you're done. We're ready for heat sink installation. To begin the heat sink installation process, we'll need to first put some thermal paste on. Here, I have some thermal paste and we'll be putting a pea-sized drop on top of the processor to apply the heat sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top and put a pea-sized drop on top of the processor. Now that the pea size drops applied, we can go ahead and actually install the heat sink. To install the heat sink, we'll want to go ahead and line it up with its four screws. Once the heat sink's lined up, we can go ahead and grab the screwdriver I talked about earlier. Use the screwdriver to secure the heat sink. Don't fully tighten all corners. Start from one corner. Go across to the next and keep doing that until they're all fully tightened. It may take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and make sure these are all fully secured. For processor number two, we're going to do the same exact thing. We'll be applying a small piece size amount of thermal paste onto the system. After that, we'll be grabbing the heat sink, placing the heat sink on, and using the same screwdriver from before. Go ahead and pick a corner and start with it. And as I said before, don't fully tighten it down. Go to the opposite corner and start tightening it down. We're now done with heat sink installation number two. Let's go on to the RAM. Now that both processors have their heat sinks installed, we're gonna go ahead and install the RAM. Now, if you remember earlier from the video, we're gonna be installing in B1 and B2. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the RAM sticks. Make sure they're lined up correctly, and then once they are, apply slight pressure and they'll pop right in. That's it for processor number two. All right, so now we've got processor number one that needs some RAM. So we're going to be installing an A1 and A2. So let's grab our RAM stick. Let's make sure that it's lined up properly. Once we verify that, we're going to slide it down in the slot, apply a little bit of pressure until it clicks. Boom, done. Let's move on to A2. Same exact thing, line it up, push it in. Let's flip up the rest of these. Now that we have the processors and RAM in, let's go ahead and move on to the RAID controller. To install the RAID controller, let's go ahead and grab it. If you notice, I have this kind of dangling wire off here. This is actually kind of an auxiliary power and actually comes from the riser board as seen here, right here on the main board. On this card, we have our two SAS cables. This cable right here will actually be plugging into one of these two ports, most likely port A. So let's begin. To install this, we're gonna pop this out and we're actually gonna slide the PCI card in. 
Once it's slid in, we're going to place this back down. We're going to come over here. We're going to install our auxiliary power, as I was saying earlier. And last but not least, we're going to plug in our SAS cable here into A. This SAS cable is actually running up here front, and it's plugged into the back plane that the hard drives are going to. More on that in here in just a moment. Now that that's done, we're actually good to go ahead and place in the shroud. Let's go ahead and place in the shroud. That's this big monster guy. When placing the shroud, if there's cable management opportunities such as this, I always try to use them. Now there's nothing really for this cable, but I do try to keep it out of the way so it doesn't hit anything. All right guys, so we're done with everything inside the server. We're good to put its lid back on. Let's move on to the front of the server. All right, I wanted to go over not only the CD-ROM drive, these at normal USBs, but mainly the backplane. The backplane, as I said earlier, is actually where the hard drives will plug into. More on that in just a second, we'll be plugging on the hard drives. But as you notice, these SAS cables here, there's one on the left, one on the right, they go back to the RAID controller. These SAS cables actually are what control the data and allow the RAID controller to put all of these drives into a RAID. Not only does it control the data on the backplane, but it also provides power to each drive. Now, we have our, or sorry, our CD-ROM drive over here off to the left. This allows us to boot from CDs, install drivers and such from a CD. Next, we have our two USB slots. And as I was saying, they're kind of abnormal. They're different. The reason these are here actually is due to a slew of OSs, ESXi, uh, FreeNAS, I'm pretty sure you guys can name off a bunch more. Um, that's just a couple to give you an idea that actually can be installed onto a USB stick. Once installed on this USB stick, you can actually use it to boot, and that can actually become your boot drive, allowing you to use all four of the drives that you install on this system strictly as a data store or as a data drives and not have to actually use for any OS operations. So let's go ahead and get the lid on, and let's get moving on to the hard drives. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this back lid on. Go ahead and line it up. Once it's lined up, you should easily just be able to push and slide it. Now it's in. Now let's go ahead and move on to the hard drives. So as I was saying before, we have a cradle here, and if you notice, this cradle has a bunch of different screw holes. These screw holes, which go on each side, allow for four different screws to be placed on the hard drive and used to secure the hard drive. Let me grab one that's done. So if you notice on this hard drive here, we have two screws on each side. One on each corner. This allows it to have this hard drive where it's secure and can't fall out. So let's go ahead and install these hard drives. It's as easy as pushing it in. Once it gets in all the way, you just push the little lever. Let's do the next one. Slide it on in until you feel it all the way in, then push the lever. Third one. Slide it in. It takes sometimes a little bit to get them lined up and push the lever. And last but not least, let's get it lined up, push it all the way in, and push the lever. That's it. So we've now completed our server installation. We are now actually ready to go ahead and get an operating system installed on this system and use it for any type of lab environment or production. Maybe you want to do a Plex server. Maybe you want to learn about ESXi or Proxmox. But now it's ready to go. So if you take a look at my other videos, I've got a bunch of other videos talking about how to install operating systems. But for now, I'm going to move to the back of this server because I want to cover a few more key points and a few more details on IO. Here we are on the back of the R410. I want to go over a few things as I've seen people ask exactly, you know, what they should use, what they shouldn't use, and that on the back of the end of a server. So on this one, we have two power supplies, and actually if you're using both of them and say one were to die, you actually don't have to turn the system off. It's as easy as pushing this lever and pulling the power supply out and swapping a new one in. Once the new one's in, go ahead and put it on in the power and you're good to go. Coming on over here, you'll notice we have two one gig network NICs. Right next to them, we have two USBs, followed by our iDRAC, or your remote access console. For IBM, they have IMM, and for HP, they have ILO. Right next to that, we have a VGA, and followed by that is a serial cable. So, my recommendation is, most of the time, what I like to do, if I was running this as such as, say, an ESXi host, 
both of these ports would actually be used on the SXI host. One would be main, second one would either be as a failover or load balance across the two. It depends what you want to do. There'll be more tutorials on that later, exactly how to set these NICs up in the SXI. I actually have a lot of it recorded, I just need to get it edited. Now over here, this is a whole nother NIC that I want to go over. This is the iDRAC, and as I was mentioning earlier, IBM, HP, a lot of the major brands have their own. This is your remote access control. Refer back to a video I just released re recently, I can't remember exactly, it was a few days ago, but it goes over actually how to work the iDRAC. This actually allows you access into the system, and if you have the enterprise version, you can go ahead and actually take control of the system as if you were standing right in front of it. The main benefit is that, say you were away, say you were a thousand miles away, you can actually remote into this little nick here and actually take full control of this system as if you were standing right in front of its monitor. All right, that concludes this tutorial, guys. As you can see here, Server Basics 101 is done. The machine's done. It's ready for an operating system. So let's go ahead, watch one of my other videos. I'm going to be releasing more different operating systems installed. Go ahead and get it installed, get it working, break it, figure it out, have fun in the lab. I want to thank you guys for watching, for the support. I've been enjoying this. This has been so much fun. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. If you guys have anything interesting out there, you know, that you're working on, let me know about it. I'd be happy to, you know, see what's going on out there. I'm always wanting to broaden my knowledge. If there's anything you think that I need to work on, anything I need to do better, if there's something you didn't like, if I didn't do something right, if maybe I was wrong on some info, go ahead and leave a comment down or shoot me a DM. Let me know what I did wrong and I'll try to make it better. Just want to thank everybody for the support. Go ahead and give this video a like if you thought you know it was good. If you didn't like it, you know, perfectly fine. Go ahead and hit me up for subscribe if you want to have more videos. I've got updates coming plenty more on the on the stack over here. So thanks again guys, and I'll see you in the lab.